Hello, everyone. Hi. How are you? Good. <laughs> Not that many people, but I think we are mostly the consistent flutter community. So I think this topic is about something around intermediate and advanced. So probably you need it for sometimes when you get to a company which is a little bit bigger than usual and you want to share a consistent and portable environment. And we're going to talk about Flutter application in a dev environment, dev container environment, which is uh, invented by Microsoft in VS Code. And nowadays, I think IntelliJ also support it. About me, I'm Ali. I uh, organize every Gene and Billy and Lens. And uh, we're doing Flutter events every month. And I recently joined Expo, is a Flutter, fully Flutter <laughs> company. And uh, we're using Dev Container, and that's why I learned about Dev Container. And I've been using that since I joined Expo. Uh, if you want to know mo more about Expo, you can go ahead and check out the, if you need any, if there is any opening position, you can also check out the career website. Let's jump into to the presentation and interrupt me if you have any question anytime. Uh, you don't need to uh, raise your hand and to just wait for the session to be finished. Just let me know when you need any information. Uh, you already, I think most of you already know about Docker and containers. We're using Docker and containers to virtualize the OS environment in a, in a, single, uh, in a single environment for installing packages that we need for our development or for any other things. Just we use the same Docker file, and we're using a container to make everything just in the same place and run your application or compile your application and then build. So we're using mostly in a compile mode, like uh, for Flutter itself, not for backend side, because for backend side, we're mostly using uh, Docker Compose most of the time. But for Flutter, we're actually using for CI/CD pipeline to build application in a like a Debian or Linux uh, or a Mac for the iOS side. Uh, we mostly use it for the compile time and build our application. But right now, we're going to cover Dev Container for our development. So we're using Dev, Dev Container to use everything we need for development. Any feature or any extension we use in VS Code, and we put it in the one JSON file, which is called .dev container. And you're, you have to, I mean, you're, you don't have to worry about anything about the environment, which should, what packages should I install, what extension, uh, is good for this project or anything else. Just we're using a single JSON file and we're ready to go. If we consider this as our development cycle, we have two cycles for our development and one cycle for production. We mostly, I told you, we mostly use the production uh, for the uh, Docker and container for building an application in a CI CD pipeline, in GitHub Action or GitLab. But with dev container, you can actually use dev Docker file for your production, for your, sorry, for your debugging and uh, development. But uh, there is a difference. So in dev container, you have some packages that you actually need for your testing, for your debugging, for anything that is, which is useful for you, but uh, you don't need them in, in a production mode. So these are two different concepts. 
we don't use the same dev container for the production. We're using for only the development. So these are two separate development versus production. And uh, uh, I told you uh, the dev container is introduced by Microsoft first in VS Code. Uh, IntelliJ is also supporting it, but it's not really major but they are doing some update and upgrade. Maybe later is a good thing that you can use it later. But right now, it, I have tried. It's not really good, and sometimes it fails. And it doesn't have a customization, we, which we talk later about that. And we're using, uh, if we, uh, let's talk about this uh, diagram. Uh, this is our code, which is a local, is a sorry, in our local file, and we mostly have a Flutter install in our computer, and then, or if we need it for Android, we install Android or anything. If we need for Linux or Windows, we install some other packages. But in container, we mount all of the local files into the container, and then we add anything that we need. File system, terminal, processing, running application, and debugger, which all in the container. We don't have anything else beyond the container. But here in local format, uh, we need to install everything in our local machine, which is, which is, uh, it works, but uh, for a, for a, like a larger scale, uh, it's not what exactly you shared everything between your uh, developers. So uh, I think I have some, I mentioned some benefit. I don't know where did I put, but the benefit is that uh, the benefits are including sharing a one single uh, project. Oh, I removed the slide, sorry. <laughs> but uh, as you understand, the benefit is like sharing a same environment between everyone in the company and making it easier to onboard people to the team or project. So we don't need to make a, usually we have a, a huge readme file to install blah, 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 this step, this step, or this step, and then they can run the project. But with this, uh, with this dev, in, dev container, you can just as simple as it, just open the dev container in the VS Code and they are ready to start the project. Sorry for that, but I uh, list all of the benefits. Maybe I put it later in the, when we share the uh, presentation. Okay, how to start using dev container? Just install these two extensions. And also, I forgot to mention, uh, remote development uh, also is good for when you want to SSH your whole project into uh, like a server or anything else that you don't have. For example, I have Linux or I have Mac. I want to test my application in a Linux or Windows. You can just SSH to your server and run all the project into the, your, your server. And uh, it's really great that you want to test your application everywhere and you don't need to have them all at once. Sometimes we don't need to test our application every time uh, in other platforms, but when you want to like make a release or anything else, you can just SSH your project and use the dev, dev, dev container in that environment. Uh, control shift P and just open uh, for uh, for starting your project. Uh, there is a good uh, command for uh, in VS Code. You can use add dev container, and then you can choose a simple uh, JSON file, and you can customize later. If you add your dev container JSON, it's going to be in this folder. The dev container. Uh, these are, uh, are not related to VS Code. This is the uh, a standard for dev container. If you have the .dev container in any folder, you can use any ID that supports dev container. So if you have here like this, 
uh, IntelliJ also understand that you have a dev container. So this is the standard, it's not only for the VS Code. And uh, after creation, you have this file, the JSON file, and you can use it. And uh, you can go ahead and check this website to see what are the references and what uh, key value I can use for JSON files. Uh, there are many good uh, key value that you can mount, you can, I don't know, add your extension, add any setting for the VS code that you want to share in the container, or forward ports, or any creation command afterward, or uh, uh, defining your remote user. Uh, and how to finish, <laughs> start your Docker, the only thing that you need is just installing Docker for your new members, and then Control Shift P and open your dev container. Yes? Uh, she asked, she wants to use the open source version of Podman instead of Docker. It's almost exactly the same. Sorry, can you repeat? Uh, it's called Podman, P-O-D-M-N. It's the exact same thing as Docker, except you don't have to pay if you're a big organization. Because uh, if you have more than 10 million revenue, you're supposed to pay for Docker, uh, but uh, most people don't know that. Um, so there's a completely open source alternative called Podman, and it does the exact same thing as, uh, as Docker. Not exactly. What are, what are the limitations? There have to be some limitations. There's no limitations. None. It's just an open source alternative to, to the Docker runtime, and it's made by the NSA, I think, or the US government. And integration with Kubernetes is identical? Well, Docker and Podman are different runtimes from Kubernetes. Uh, I think you can do Kubernetes in Podman just like you can do Kubernetes in Docker as well. Uh, are you talking about like a Docker image, like to put it and pull it out? But it's runtime. Yeah. It's the runner itself. So instead of typing Docker LS or you know the Docker command, you type Podman, and it's the open source, fully open source, no fee okay, okay. version. And it's exact same. And how they would understand that we're having more than 10 million users, and how they want to know, I don't know. Yeah, basically Docker, if you have more than 10 million uh, in revenue, you have to pay Docker technically for your local Docker. Uh, I didn't know that, but <laughs> it's good to know. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about the revenue and stuff, but good to know. You can use alternative for sure. I don't know if it is supported by a dev container or not, but probably they support. And yeah, that's all of my slides, and we're going to check out the demo code that I made. In my demo code, I have a lot of <laughs> struggling. The struggling is first for the first setup, and then it's really smooth. Just I will show you, but I'm using my Fedora, so I couldn't uh, mount it on the on the Mac, but it probably has some idea. But uh, I didn't have time to investigate more. Okay, uh, this is our like filter simple application. We have dev container, we have VS Code, which uh, you can share also, but our dev container is in this folder. And whenever you have dev container, probably there is a pop-up here. I don't know if the not, yes. Uh, and it suggests you to reopen this project in a container. So you just click on this, or if you don't see this notification, just Control Shift P and uh, Dev Container, and open uh, open folder in Container, and you can choose your content uh, the f the project, and you can open it. Uh, but we have this, and we click on this, and then it reopens in the container. It takes a little bit time for the first time. I'm sorry. Uh, 
uh, to install all the packages and uh, any installation command that you uh, specified in your Docker file. But because since I already installed everything, it didn't take that much time, and now it's ready to develop. Uh, we're going to talk about, uh, let's just run the application to see that in the dev container, and we're going to talk about the JSON files and everything else. This is an application that's running in a dev container. Uh, um, you, you can just use any feature it has in Flutter. Uh, when you close your application, it has some GTK error, but uh, it's not that really important. When you just close your application, it gives you some error. But we have to also mount some graphical things that I will discuss in the Docker file. So this is basically our Docker container JSON. We have a name. We have we have to address the Docker Compose and uh, the service that we're going to use, which is your front. You can also have some services for your backend and anything else. Just use uh, mention your services for your front, for your Flutter. And mention the, any workspace you want here, and then the customization for VS Code. Uh, if you have IntelliJ, you have to add the custom, uh, custom extension or anything that you want to use for IntelliJ. I don't know. I couldn't find any new uh, update for IntelliJ. I don't know if they added or not. But VS Code, you only need to mention it in the customization tag. And for example, I put uh, one line, one empty line each file, or I'm using the bash for my terminal or format on save, which is true. And you also need to put all the extension that you want. You go to the extension file, it's already in a cell here. And if you want to add any uh, extension, you go here, I think, and you just need to copy extension ID and put it in your dev container. And the uh, next time that you open your dev container, that will be in a cell. Here, we have, for sure, we have Git, we have a Flutter, we have Dars, we have some other useful stuff which we need for our development. We just need to mention them here. Uh, we're using uh, another, this is really important, don't use root. Uh, as a user, use another user like dev or I don't know, VS Code or anything else. And you need also mount SSH or GPG key that you want to use here to use the uh, Git here because the Git, uh, this is a Docker image, so they don't have access, I mean, without mounting your SSH, they don't have access to your SSH to commit or push or anything else. And uh, let's jump into the Docker Compose. Yes? Uh, how do you, uh, if I understood, the dev container is going to, uh, you are going to use it as a, to run the, your the Flutter application inside the container? Yes. Yeah. How can I test, um, I, if I want to test uh, into an iOS simulator or Android simulator? I want to test the application. Uh, they said repeat the question for. Ah, oh, I repeat. <laughs> okay. They want to know if they can use the Android or iOS in the uh, in the dev container. Yes, you can use it. You have to install all the Android uh, things, JDK or anything else. And for iOS, I couldn't because we have a lot of issue in the Mac. We, you need to basically give permission 
I didn't have time to investigate more, but you can use it uh, for the iOS side too. Then on the Kotlin, you can launch the iOS. Yes. Yes. Basically, it's the graphical environment, the graphical volumes that you need to mount it in your container, and they can use it uh, without any issue. For here, we mount GTK for Linux application. Um, so, just to confirm, you're using the Kotlin uh, Linux runtime with a forwarding GetIt container to, to be debugging. Um, your app, right? Yes. Uh, it's not web, it's really the Linux version of a, of a compilation. Yes, uh, let's talk about uh, things in the Docker file, where I'm going to show you the Docker file later. Boris? Yeah, my question was more about you mounting the, your local SSH directory to, into the container. Yes, exactly. You sure you want to do that that way? Yes, uh, the question is that uh, can you mount your SSH? Yes, you can no, mount. I know you can mount, but there, here you're mounting everything. So even if you don't have all the key for the Git, uh, let's see, purposes in the container, you're mounting everything there. If you have your key for anything else, you're mounting everything. Your Windows, you, uh, <laughs> you can mount the key that you want. You can specify the oh. key here but I didn't have any other keys here. So, is that the answer? No, I know it works, but it's just like... Yeah, yeah, you can. Okay, just add your key ID here. <laughs> For me, it's uh, like uh, when you use the... That's what I'm saying, you're mounting, here you're mounting, actually you're... you're but it's, it's a local image. It's not going to, but if you want to use a, like a remote SSH, yes, it's better to use the SSH that you want to use. I, I will share with you a story after that. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, um, let's jump into the Docker Compose. Uh, this is our Docker Compose file. Uh, I found uh, an image which uh, wasn't that great. I couldn't build the uh, Docker Compose, but there is an image. You can go ahead and check it out. And if you can uh, make it work, just make a PR or something. But it didn't work, unfortunately. Uh, but we're using our local Docker file, which we discuss after this. And here we have a bunch of uh, stuff from a workspace that you mount your current uh, repository into your Docker. And this is uh, specifically for the Linux site that you need to use for, uh, for the XD, uh, I mean, the graphical things. Uh, I found it on, uh, on, on a website that you, they said if you want to mount your VLAN display, you need to add this into your volume and also put it as an environment. And also uh, other stuff which uh, I have no idea how to um, they found it, but it's the same things for, uh, for using the Linux side. And for the Android emulator, you need to add KVM and some and just initialize some uh, Android Home or other paths that you want to use here. And your pop cache, if you have any packages that you want to use it in your uh, in your project or any other stuff. This is our the volume and environment. If you don't mount the VLAN, it doesn't work, and you cannot open the graphical things into the container. It gives you issue. And uh, you can also add other services here, like you have backend or anything else, just uh, put it as a depend as, uh, for this front and mention it here for your project and put it somewhere else or another repository. And uh, that's it. And we have another entry point. We have a, like a sh command that uh, is a post command that also I'm going to talk about that later. Let's jump into the Docker file. 
Our Docker file is uh, Fedora. I was testing uh, Ubuntu today. Also, I got some permission issue because of the remote user and other stuff. Uh, I, we shouldn't use uh, root user, so uh, we got some issue. It's fixable, but I couldn't find a solution uh, in the matter of time. Uh, we're using a dev user, and uh, we're going to create a user later in the bottom. And uh, we need to install our packages. The packages, basically, some packages that you need for your environment, and anything that you want. For example, at my work, we're using Network Manager, so we add a Network Manager here, and no one need to know, I mean, anyone, uh, they have it already on their system, the new members. But if uh, they don't know, they, can, they need to install it by hand and manually, which is not that great. Uh, other graphical library here, Git, uh, and anything that you need for compiling the Linux version and uh, anything that you want for your Android emulator and uh, JDK stuff. Uh, here uh, we have, uh, we're, we're going to uh, add Android Home. Also, uh, I don't know, but I uh, got the issue for the localization that it couldn't understand my local time. So I had to add the uh, local time here. And uh, with a package called TZ something, TZ, TZ data. And you need to add a local time for your Android development. Here, we're, use, we're creating a non-root user by this command, and we're getting the privilege to this user to do anything. And we're defining our work, work directory, which is home and dev. And uh, afterward, we're downloading the Android and everything that we need for the Android side. And then we're going to download the Flutter site. And we can also uh, define our path for the Flutter here or Dart uh, to the Flutter bean or Dart SDK bean. And then we uh, just clone the Git and check out to the master branch or anything, any branch that you want. And you just define the version. And after all, you just uh, run the Flutter doc doctor and Flutter config. And then you just remove the pop cache that you had already before, which uh, prevents other conflicts. Uh, so far, any question for Dockerfy? Ninja, Ninja is using uh, uh, is useful for the Linux. Yes, uh, it's mentioned in the in the Flutter website that you need to install for your Flutter environment. This is a Docker file, and after Docker file, uh, we're doing some other stuff, which is a bash code. You can also add anything here. For example, we are having the git command like. Uh, we have a Git editor, which code, or any other stuff here. And uh, sign your commit here, for example, or any other stuff. And then uh, Flutter pop get or Flutter clean. Uh, this is really important because sometimes uh, Flutter, um, Flutter build has a conflict. And there is a build uh, folder here if you just upgrade your Flutter or any stuff. Uh, there is a huge, uh, there is an issue that you cannot understand what is it. And I had a lot of time to fix it out by just simple usage of Flutter Keen. So clean everything after using your dev container or even when you want to start your project. And uh, some other stuff like uh, get, giving access to the pop cache or Dart tools that we want to use, for example, BuildRunner or any other stuff that we want to use within our container. We want to give them permission to be able to use those commands too. This is the command. You can also add any other commands that which are useful. We have it in our project. 
but it is really customized for any project that you want to add them, just add it in the bash command and you can use in this terminal. This terminal that you have in the VS Code is within your container. This is the workspace, it's not in my local file. I don't have Flutter on my local, so Flutter runs here. And you can use any other command that you, I mean, give access to the, I mean, executable files here. So uh, this terminal also using the dev container. Anything that you installed before, you can use them here. And yeah, uh, and uh, other stuff is just only VS Code. You can also have them here to share between uh, your uh, members and any other uh, people that you want, which already, you already know about them. And this is the same as before. But if you want to share some, uh, uh, some uh, settings, you can define it in your Docker uh, container JSON here. And basically, is that all? After the first setup is really, really hard for some companies. They have their own stuff. They have their own customization. And after making this work, everything works fine after all. And you can use it everywhere with any person. They need only install Docker and VS Code, and they can, uh, they can run the project without any hassle. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, uh, nothing else to mention. Uh, going back to the, nothing on the slide, so just add one slide. Just, I want to mention a summary. Okay. <laughs> you are using Fedora, right? Yes, yeah, it's very lightweight. It's very light. And if you want to install many other stuff like Android, for sure, it has a. That's why you have to find Yeah, it's the yeah, same, uh, same as the local, but uh, it's very lightweight. It doesn't have Fedor. You can also use other images, like uh, Alpine uh, images for Debian or any other stuff there that you don't want to use. So you can also use that images. I mean, lightweight images to not having other packages. No, I wasn't. No, that's what I'm asking. I'm asking the final one, the side of the final one. No? It's an image. I don't know, like yeah. some gig? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, a few gigs. <laughs> if you install Android, for sure, it's going to have a lot of uh, volume it takes. Maybe I can change the caption. Okay. How long it takes to do clean build for Docker image? No, that's not my question. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 my question is, I understand your, 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 your route. You can use Alpine and Fedora. You share with us the Docker image when you're doing the run, you have many layers. You're running, you're installing your packages, and you're also installing Android. So what is the start of the final Docker image? Some okay. geek? <laughs> we can, I can check my <laughs> Docker here. <laughs> I don't have the okay. number. Okay, show Docker image, that's the one. Yeah, you go to the image. It's six geek. That's the one I'm working. Okay, it's six geek. <laughs> okay. So your, your, your first image Fedora is 300 megabytes, but the final one is six gigabytes. Yes, exactly. It's huge. <laughs> yeah, it's huge. Oh. It's also huge on the local file too. At uh, first time, it takes the download time, and then it will be cached, so you don't need to yeah. download again. If you want to do the first time, oh, uh, it depends on your internet <laughs> speed. <laughs> For me, it takes like uh, 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Yeah. I will be honest with you while I ask you the question. If you go back to Docker image, what, what made me ask the question is because when you show your Docker image, or your Docker file, I mean, you were installing the package before Android. So every time you will have one package you want to install, you will destroy the layer and you will have to take all those minutes again. So the Android configuration, if it was me, I would put on the top. That's why I was like, oh, how long is it taking to build it? What is it? Uh, because with Docker is a layer, as you see, right, the cache. 
the uh, the Android. I have Android line thirty nine. I think thirty nine. Nine thirty nine. Yeah, yeah, for sure you can also, I mean, make it more performance or make it efficient okay. well, later. For sure. No problem. So a couple of things you can do. Um, you could, uh, if you have the same baseline for multiple projects, of course you can save the image and you can reuse the image so you don't have to duplicate it. Uh, a couple of things you could do, you could uh, do a multi-stage build. Yeah. Multi-stage build would be a great idea. Uh, you could source your pre-downloaded stuff by different image, just copy it to another to the final layer. That would be really good. And also to answer a question earlier about the mounting the DSSH directory, you can use a credential help, helper uh, as well as a SSH uh, agent. Uh, all that is supported out of the box. <laughs> so you don't, you don't really have to mount. <laughs> Thank you for all the information. Uh, and also, uh, to the Podman guy, whoever it was, uh, there is a preferences to change the executable from Docker to something else, and you can try. Uh, not everything in Podman is 100% compatible, uh, but for basic. Uh, sometimes it does the job. Thank you so much. <laughs> if you're using uh, web, pure Flutter web and you want to run nginx, uh, then the image gets down to 300 megs. Um, if you don't want to run the full graphical user interface within the container. So if you're just building for Flutter web and exposing the web from your Container to your your tests, then you can just package it with nginx, and then it's significantly smaller. Okay, okay, sure. Yes, there are many improvements. So this is the basic version that we have to we can start first, and then after a long time, even you can also put your Docker file into the image or using other members to improve your Docker file for sure. Uh, Yes, I want to jump into the last slide. Uh, yeah, basically we need, when we have benefits, use the dev container for sure. If you have a single package, single application, and you're only developing that application, you don't need to make a Docker container. It has a, such a, uh, as mentioned, it has a lot of uh, memory usage and uh, uh, image file size and many other stuff, so don't need to use it every time. And save the VS Code setting as you want to share between all the other members and don't use other setting for yourself with other members, so uh, use it in your uh, setting JSON file, not with the project file. And don't even uh, don't also push it to the project. And also, I mentioned first setup is a hassle, and then enjoy working in dev container environment. Thank you so much.